Hey there, Baker Belts here. Today is the 22nd anniversary of my spiritual awakening. So for today's video, I thought I'd talk a little bit about spiritual awakening in general, and then go over some of the highlights of the last 22 years in my spiritual adventure. For those of you who haven't seen my video, my first Kundalini awakening, um, I discussed my awakening experience in that video, so uh, I'll leave a link to that in the description. In the past several weeks, I had this vague notion that maybe something significant was going to happen today. Um, it's morning while I'm recording this, so maybe something will later in the day, I don't know. But first waking up this morning, it was kind of not what I was expecting. Uh, the sun just entered Scorpio, and since I have a Mars-ruled sun sign, that usually like really amps me up, but instead I woke up feeling a little less energetic than usual. Not exactly depressed, but just kind of didn't feel like doing anything. Kind of had to force myself to make this video, to be honest. Um, in the ancient world, the number 22 was recognized as a number of completion. The reason for this is that the ancient used the number 22 divided by 7 as an approximation of the number pi. So if 7 is the radius of the circle, then 22 is approximately the circumference. And so 22 was a symbol of the whole pi, pun intended. Yeah, so back to awakening. Uh, if you've been following the spiritual community at all, then you know everybody seems to be talking about awakening right now, or waking up, or taking the red pill, and like how all of humanity is going through this like massive awakening. Um, yeah, sorry to spoil this, but like <laughs> we've been talking about this since the 60s, so this isn't exactly anything new, but it is trending right now, so it's gotten a lot of people's... Uh, attention. Uh, it's true that a lot of people are reaching the stage of spiritual development called awakening. This is an experience that everyone on the spiritual path inevitably, inevitably experiences at some point of time. It's that moment when you take the red pill, so to speak, and discover that everything you thought you knew about reality is actually not exactly true. And in truth, there is so much more. For many people, this is a pretty eye-opening experience. And for a lot of people, it completely derails them and sends them down a completely different path in life. For a brief moment, you glimpse reality. And reality is so much more than you previously believed the world to be. But this brief moment of enlightenment is just a flash. For most people, the spiritual high quickly subsides. But after the experience, you can never go back. You'll spend the next very large period of time trying to make sense of just what happened to you. Uh, there's a very long period of spiritual seeking that usually follows. In my case, it led me to a lot of dead ends. Like, I spent 10 years of my life absolutely convinced that the world was going to end on December 21st, 2012. You know, I studied the Mayan calendar and Terrence McKenna's theory of, like, time wave zero and all sorts of craziness in those years. Um, what a lot of people who are going through awakening aren't aware of, though, is that awakening is actually a stage of spiritual development that happens really early on the spiritual path. Um, in the system that I've been trained in, it's actually just the second of seven stages. Um, after the initial flash subsides, there's a very long stage of learning person generally becomes extremely interested in spiritual topics and starts devouring books and videos on spirituality. This is also usually when a person begins to take up a spiritual practice, 
like meditation. What after what happens after you begin meditating is that your nervous system starts going through subtle changes. Like they're literally physiological changes in like the neurons of your brain and like your spine and you know all the neurons in your system. Uh, what this does, this prepares your system to handle a larger influx of spiritual energy. A lot of people want to jump the gun and immediately open their third eye. It's a really bad idea. If your nervous system hasn't been primed first, then and you open your third eye prematurely, you can literally short circuit. And that's what happened to me during my uh, first uh, Kundalini awakening. I ended up in a psychiatric facility for three weeks because I just couldn't handle the massive influx of psychic energy that came into my system. But for a person who's been consistent in their meditation and have gone through the physiological changes that, that, um, that makes in the body, uh, the third eye will eventually just open naturally when they're ready for it. I began my meditation practice in the year 2008. I didn't reach the stage where I could naturally and safely open my third eye until the year 2014. That's six whole years of practicing meditation daily. And I know in some of the stuff I read way back in the day, they say, um, like in the East, when they're training people, they make them practice meditation for seven years before giving them any of the real teachings. So I did it in six years, maybe just because I was, you know, very zealous about it. I don't know. Um, we live in a culture where everybody wants fast results, but on the spiritual path, if you want permanent progress, you kind of have to take things slowly. Sure, a psychedelic experience will open you up to the higher realms a lot quicker, but it's an ephemeral experience that quickly fades once the substance is out of your system. And quite honestly, a lot of people aren't prepared for the psychedelic experience and end up having bad trips. But anyhow, opening the third eye actually isn't the end of development. It's really kind of just the halfway mark. Once the third eye is open, you can start learning about the spiritual realities for real because you can directly perceive them now. What the ancients called the seven planets and the 12 signs of the zodiac are very real energies. Once you become psychically receptive, you can see them as clearly as you can see the color blue when you look at the sky. Um, what the ancients personified as like gods and goddesses, they're actually real powers in the universe, as real as gravity or electricity. Um, when you first start perceiving them, you're absolutely amazed by them. You're just dumbstruck at how amazing it is. Like imagine being born deaf and then one day you can suddenly hear and like you hear music for the very first time. It's kind of like that once you start perceiving the spiritual energies, like it, open, it opens up like a whole vast new world of experience. It's been 10 years now that I've been able to perceive these energies. And at a certain point, you just don't even think about it anymore. It just becomes an everyday part of your reality. You know, as nor normal as breathing and walking, like you don't have to think about walking, you just do it. <laughs> Anyhow, for me, it's been 22 years since that first awakening experience. And like I said in the beginning, 22 is the number of completion. But in my own opinion, I am far from complete. I know where I am on the path because those who have gone ahead left signposts. And I have a general idea of where I'm going because I have faith that what they say about what comes next is true based on everything that they've said prior came true. So um, for those of you who are just waking up, my advice would be don't rush it. Uh, enjoy the process. Enjoy the journey. Your awareness will slowly but surely expand to include wider and wider vistas. 
But the destination isn't what matters. It's the journey that counts. So enjoy it. I could sum it up with my favorite Marchiba song. With the moonlight to guide you, feel the joy of being alive. The day that you stop running is the day that you arrive. In the night that you got locked in was the time to decide. Stop chasing shadows, just enjoy the ride. <laughs> Anyhow. Those are my thoughts for today. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.